we're going to have some lag issues, folks, but uh, bear with us. Um, Chris Garlock here uh, with Michael Redmond, and uh, we are very glad to be back with you. And uh, thanks for joining us on this surprise stream. Um, we will, if we have technical issues, which we may be having at the moment, I can't quite tell, uh, we will just sort of bear with it. All right. Uh, the stream. So you, you may hear me talking to my producer, uh, Stephen. Um, okay. Oh, looks like we're okay now. Uh, okay. Yes. Yes, Stephen. It was laggy. Uh, Michael, let's do a sound check on you. You want to give us a sound Hello, check? Hello, uh, Michael Redman. Uh, today I'm going to give you a game uh, from my one of my games today, this year. Okay. And who are you playing? Um, well, actually, I had a lot of games against fairly well-known players. So I decided to start at the beginning. Um, the first game against a famous player. And that was back in July against Ishida Yoshio. Okay, and we should maybe just catch people up a little bit because it's been a few months since we've been on, and you have been playing uh, quite a bit, right? I've played a lot of games. Um, this game is going to start a, a winning streak that I had, and I had a game just about every week for, uh, I guess, almost the last four months. Wow. All right, yeah. let's see. So that's that's what we've been up to, folks, among other things. And and you had those couple of cyclones too, didn't you? A couple of cyclones. Well, they're called typhoons over here. Typhoons. Um, it's the same thing, basically. Got yeah. It. All right. Uh, so yes, I know we are laggy, folks. Uh, I think that has to do. Uh, we need. We have some upgrades, uh, some equipment upgrades that we need to do. Uh, so we will we will continue with this if it's too bad. Uh, then we will uh, stop. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll just sort of see how this goes. Yeah. Um, so uh, do go ahead and ask questions in the chat, and I will relay them uh, to Michael uh, as as appropriate. So, uh, Michael, why don't you go ahead and take it away? What's the what's the what's the big picture on this game? Uh, well, um, Ishida Yoshio, obviously a, a famous kind of a legend in Go, um, uh, a title player, um, a title holder, that is. Um, and up to this point, um, I have zero wins against him. So um, this is going to be the first game that I um, actually managed to beat him. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to start um, just with the opening. And... Um, July this year, it's already a time where just about everyone is playing um, computer-generated openings. Right. So we're seeing a lot of star points, or if we're seeing the three, four points, we're seeing big shumaris usually. And this move that Black has just played, I'm the White Stones. I'm playing with the White Stones. Um, it's a move that is, uh, according to the, the computers, don't, do not tend to give it a very good score. It's a, a relatively low score for this move. So it's not played very much anymore. But of course, um, Mr. Ishida, he's a generation before me, um, sort of. So he's, and um, so he has his own rules, basically. He has his own style that he likes to play. And he doesn't care so much about what the computers are saying about him. So we continue. Um, so in the old days, this was supposed to be okay for Black because Black was getting a double Kakari here and was going to get some territory in the corner. Um, so somebody had a really good question, which was about Lee Sedal retiring from professional uh, go and wondering mm -hmm. if you had any comments about his legacy, which we could probably and should probably do a whole show on that. Um, I'm just sort of vamping, yeah. I'm, I'm vamping wow. here at the mm -hmm. moment. But, Just gaining time, I suppose. Well, yeah. he's he's a uh, he's still a great player. Um, um, he still could contribute with great games if he wanted to continue. Um, but I think he um, the news that I get is that apparently he's having some trouble with the Korean Go Association, uh -huh. and so that could be um, figuring into it. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. That uh, always a story behind the story, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. 
All right, so, uh, I think our video is back and I think we're uh, a little bit laggy, but I think uh, we're, we're, we're getting better. So thanks everybody for bearing with us. We will, we will get there. Stephen is working very, very hard. Um, all right, so why don't we, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll definitely, we're, we're, folks, we're planning to do more of these Twitch broadcasts. Uh, it's uh, obviously the way to go, and frankly, it's a, a way for us to engage with you, our viewers. So uh, we're excited about that. Uh, but uh, today is definitely, frankly, uh, we were, <laughs> this was a surprise to as much as it was uh, to you. So <laughs> mm -hmm. thank, you to, thank you to Michael for bearing with this. Um, right. Huh. Okay, good. All right, so let's uh, back, back to the Joseki. Back to the game, yeah. So I was showing these Josekis that can derive uh, from Black's attachment here in the corner, which is the favorite move for people now. Um, Black also has choices like, for instance, uh, the diagonal move here, the Gosumi, um, is a move that I've tried in some of my games. If we continue doing this, maybe I'll be able to show you a game or so where I played this move, which is, it's in, in Black's intent, it's quite similar to the attachment that I was showing just now. And the similarities being that if white attaches here, then we do get to a fairly similar. But actually, this is, this position is similar, but it's improved for black because the exchange here. Um, let's see if I can get a tool. Yeah, uh, the exchange of this stone for this stone is an advantage for black in this position. So it's better for black uh, than this position would have been. Um, basically, in this position, black's group on the left is already very close to being alive. So it makes it very easy for Black to handle that group. And so in the game, uh, Black actually jumped into the 3-3 point. Um, this is interesting because this used to be the best move for Black. Um, people used to think it was the best move for Black, that is. Um, but now people know that the computer programs like, uh, like Leela, LCO, I think uh, technical people call it LCO. Mm -hmm. um, I call it Leela. Um, and, and then there's fine art. The, the computer programs um, say that uh, this variation here, which is the game variation, this is supposed to be good for white. Hey, uh, have you seen, I got a uh, couple, we've been so long since we talked. Uh, somebody uh, told me about this uh, Master of Go. I've got it on my iPhone and mm -hmm. my iPad. And so I know a lot of these now because I've been playing them. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's amazing. It's it's pretty strong for you know being on the phone and on the iPad. Right. Well, um, I I have that too by myself um, yeah. actually. Um, it turns out that it's it's strong enough. Um, it's I haven't actually played it. It's probably strong enough to beat me, um, but it's not as interesting as the computer programs um, that you put on a computer uh, because a lot depends on the hardware. So, like, if you're doing it on a smartphone, again, it depends on the IO, the CPU of the smartphone, I suppose. But um, usually, it's just going to be doing a few. Um, it's going to be very slow. Like, you, you can watch the um, the searches, and it's yeah, gonna be, yeah, it, it's going to be one to two digits or something like that, probably. Right. And it's a li little bit better on an iPad. Um, but basically, that um, it gives you a. a Maybe a valid answer, but it's not as interesting as um, having the computer program do the same thing, in which case you can fairly quickly get to hundreds of thousands of uh, searches. Gotcha. Um, if you're a technical person, you have some super, um, a lot of GPUs or something, you're probably going into millions of uh, searches. <laughs> I, I, will say, serious, yeah. mm -hmm. I will say, though, it's interesting uh, for me, you know, the, 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 the search depth is, you know, I think I've got it down. The most it'll give you, I think, is five stones. I can beat it on five. I can beat it on four. I have not been able to beat it on three yet. So it's 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 strong enough for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So even on an iPhone, it's going to be strong. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, somebody was just wondering, because uh, you were referring to it, have you been studying with the bots on a regular basis? Yeah, so I use Leela most of the time. Okay. Um, and I use it on a local computer so it's, it's it's just one gpu that i'm using um i'm not getting as many searches as i would if i was for instance using icloud and stuff but i sort of like to see uh, a kind of a what i would think of as a thought process is the computer um, does a, a smaller number of searches i can see it changing its mind or finding a new move um, at a speed that i can follow 
Whereas right. um, if you do it um, on iCloud and you're using the top level computers, then um, you very quickly come up with an answer that is very hard to comprehend. Yeah, and and you don't see how the 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 what you might think of as a logical process where the computer got there. What's well, funny? I showed it to Mr. Yang when I was at the Kotzen uh, Open a couple of weeks ago, and uh, to an, and he had played a Chinese pro, you know, in his uh, in his uh, pro pro game, and so I, sh I showed him and I, I ran it through Leela, and he he often would look at the the suggested move by Leela, and he'd say. Yeah, I thought about that, but it was too complicated for me to read it all the way out. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's that, and sometimes it's just a game you don't want to get into. Ah, okay. And it's it's not your style of play. Um, I had a lot of trouble um, sort of translating that into something that I wanted to, to understand. And I've decided that a few points in winning percentage is, is not a big deal. Like right. looking at the top players, they're losing 10 points and giving it back every, almost every move if you believe the computers. Um, so it's, it's a few points in the opening. It's not a big deal. It's, a, it's the part of the game where I think the computer programs, you might say they're guessing. They, they don't yeah. really fully understand the position at that point. Right. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, back to the game. OK, so this point, um, this would be sort of perfect for White if White had time to play the pressing move here. But in this game, uh, the Joseki in the lower left is not finished. So black would probably counter with something like this and start a fight move. This would be a very advantageous fight for black because black's alive in the corner. If white, uh, for instance, cuts black off, black can push white around a bit and um, have a good position on both sides. So it's uh, white um, basically did not have time to play the pressing move. It would be nice if white had had time to do that at some point and, and get a big moyo like this. Um, so this would have been what I would have wanted to play with, but I have not had time to play play that exchange. So this is a point where I would be sort of expecting black to play. A modern player would probably play something like this. Now, this is the kind of move that um, people think of now because they've seen it a lot, again, with the computer programs. Um, but each of the plays here. And I play a very unusual variation of this Joseki in the upper left. Um, and um, when I asked Leela afterwards, uh, the suggested move was this. And I was afraid that black would push through and cut. Hmm. And we would get to this kind of position, probably here, uh, maybe something like this. And my feeling with this position is that I'm sort of limited to the left side. It's a nice territory, but it's not really 100% territory yet. Like there, right. it looks like black can try, try something in the area still. And black has a lot of room in the rest of the board. And so this is a position where, um, according to Leela, white has good prospects. But it's a position where uh, I would feel a bit uneasy about how to continue playing the game. Um, so this is an example of a position where um, maybe I don't, um, whether objectively the computer is right or wrong, um, doesn't matter as much to me as to whether I actually want to play this game. And I think that's very important. It's, it makes a difference uh, how I will um, how I will play the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. So I played one attachment here, um, and Black answered, and then I pressed. So this has been seen. Um, um, it's not a new move. It's, it's been around for a while. It's been seen before. That whole idea behind this is if Black pushes through and cuts now. Um, now black has been committed to the fight on the left side. Black has played this move here. And so um, black cannot stop there now. So if black continues like that, um, white will be able to attack black on, on, on the upper left. So um, I could go on with this Josegi for a while. It's actually very complicated, um, but it's probably gonna be good for white. That's, um, this is a position, the local position in the upper left is something that people have studied and they find a lot of good variations for white. It's, it, it seems to be good for white in this position. So the whole point here is that um, if black has started, if I've made this exchange, let's mark the white stone too. When we've started with this marked exchange and then we come to this position, um, it's relatively bad for black to stop playing on the left side. And it means that I'm going to be able to attack black 
on the in the upper left. So this is good for me. So by playing this attachment, um, this exchange here, um, I've made it more um, less viable for black to push through and cut. So black crawls here. So that's according to plan. And black crawls twice and jumps. And then I extend. Uh, so this this shows the drawback of my move because if we had gotten to this position without that exchange, let's just do that variation. If we had gotten to this position without that exchange, then I would probably find a different way to play. Like for instance, I might just play the capping move here, and that would be better than the game for white compared to the game. Um, it's a little better for white uh, not to have this exchange here. So I've, um, I've paid a bit to be able to get to this position, but I thought I needed to play that attachment to get to, to this position. And so black plays an extension. Um, at this point, it would have been good for black to play the push here, and I'll probably play a double honey. And maybe something like this. So, so this kind of uh, variation might have been a bit better for black to, to get out into the center a little bit before playing the extension on the side. In the game, Black immediately played the extension. So I got to curl around here. Um, and Black continued by playing this move. This is um, with the Joseki in the upper left, um, for, especially for Q players, I think it's important to remember that Black has this uh, extension down on the second line um, in association with having a stone on the side here. So when Black has a stone on the side here, Black can continue with his extension on the lower side, and Black will be able to connect up to the side stone or the corner. Um, so for instance, if I play here, Black can connect up to the side. That this would just be good for Black. So instead of doing that, I capture in a ladder. Again, um, I'm sort of helped by the fact that Black has played a three, four point in the beginning, um, because if that stone in the upper right corner was a star point, this ladder would not have worked. But because it's a three, four point, uh, I'm talking about this stone here. Since it's a three, four point, the ladder is going to slip right through there and it's going to work. And so black connects to the corner and I play here. This is putting a lot of pressure on those three stones on the side. So black has to continue by connecting uh, to the corner. So black has played a lot of low moves um, and white has thickness towards the center. I'd say it's about an even uh, position because black does have a lot of territory in this game. Black has something like 30 points um, in two areas. And white has nothing, just about. So <laughs> black has a big territorial. <laughs> black has a big territorial lead. Um, but of course, I'm um, I have tempo. I have uh, the first move towards the right half of the board, and I have a lot of thickness towards the center. Yeah, I like black a lot in, in mm -hmm. this in this game. This this is uh it's not it just feels very patiently played too. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a very typical style for Ishida. Um, he's a he likes territory. He always liked territory. And so he plays the Kosumi. Um, it's interesting um, that the computer programs, at least Leela, tends to give a low score to an extension to the side usually. Um, and in a position like this, Leela will uh, tell you to play a Shimari from the star point. Um, but the old style is to play um, an extension to the side with enough room for a two space extension. So, so I have barely enough room for a two space extension um, at this point. Uh, so I, this is as far as I can go. Uh, usually human players will play an extension as far as you can go safely. Um, so this would be a very, this is a very human move I played here. And my feeling was that I wanted to take space on the side because I have thickness in the center. So I should be uh, inviting a fight towards the center of the board. So black invades. Um, so this is also a position where the computer program seemed to prefer maybe a 3-3 invasion, or actually this, this, this attachment here is, has become very popular. Um, in this case, it sort of it has possibilities to re, um, revert to a 3-3 invasion. Or if white plays this way, um, this is where black will be taking a position on the side 
And in this game, it works fairly well for, for Black because Black wants to have a fairly strong group there on the side um, as Black will continue to attack White, White's uh, lonely stone on the right side. So this is the kind of move that a computer would suggest, or um, actually it would give a fairly good score to the three three point. But um, human players tend to invade here. It's, it's the natural move that was played for centuries before. Um, uh, but this is uh, this Kosumi here, the diagonal move was probably a small mistake. I think Black would have done better to just jump out into the center and erase my thickness as, as well as quickly as possible. Um, and the virtue of this move is that the corner group that Black has, it still has room. For instance, if White does something like this, Black has still room to play here. Well, in this position, obviously, Black would just surround White from the center. But Black also has room to make a base on the side um, because black has not provoked white to play in that direction. So by jumping here, it actually gives black more space for the corner group. Um, so uh, this would be good for black in any case. Of course, in this position, black will have an oppor opportunity to surround white, so that's even better. In the game, black played the Kosumi. I play the knight's move. Um, in this case, uh, it's very important for black to continue playing in the center. Otherwise, I'm going to be put, putting pressure on him from the center. For, for instance, if Black plays uh, something like this, then I would be able to curl around from the center. And you can see Black is um, getting a bit cramped, and I'll, I'm starting to have potential for a ter territory in the center of the board. So Black jumps out, and I take this position. And Black kicks. Um, so this is an, uh, uh, kind of an important point in the game. Um, and uh, White's next move is, um, is a move that I want people to remember. It was a good move, um, though I say it myself. <laughs> so Chris, where would you play? For White? Yeah. Ooh. OK. Oh, there's a little bit of a lag here. Let me, uh, let, me let it catch up here. Hold on a sec. I have to see what I'm looking at. Mm. Black has just kicked in the corner at Q17. And white to play? White to play. Uh... Hmm. I mean, the obvious thing is just standing up, but that seems a little mm -hmm. too simple. What about a what about like a knight's move sort of surrounding kind of a thing? Mm. Well, um, not, not quite. Not, not quite. quite. Honey, honey underneath. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, okay, so the test is here is to play the um, this move here in the corner. Uh, S seventeen placement in the corner. S17. Oh, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> so this is, uh, so um, actually the computer has black playing a honey on the left and then white can connect to the side. So this would be a very efficient way for white to make a base for white's group on the right side. Okay. So in the game, black blocks from the side on the second line. So in this case, white gets to play a honey here and take away the corner territory. So this is going to reinforce White's group on the upper side. Uh, so, you know, here's what's weird, right? So, so there's a lag, or you're seeing what I'm saying? Yeah, so what's happening is that I'm hearing you on Skype in real time, but I don't see the moves until they show up. It looks like we've got about a, a good 30-second lag. Oh. Mm. So, you know... So I, do you I, see White playing Q2 right now, Q18? So now you see it, maybe. Yeah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open up uh, KGS in another window so I can actually mm -hmm. see in real time. So you, you carry on, and I'll, I'll go ahead and okay. do that. Sorry, folks. Um, I actually have another question for you here. <laughs> All right, give me, give me a sec. Let me, uh, let, me, yeah. let, me, let me get this opened up here so I can actually be, be with you. Okay. 
KGS. Oh, okay. I think we're caught up now. All right. So what's the question? So black has just played at R17. Um, you can see white has um, gotten into the corner a little bit. Yeah. Um, so now I'm going to make a mistake. <laughs> so, so you have to find the better move. It's, it's going to be relatively easy this time. Okay. Just be a, be, play a kind of a common sense move and you'll do better than I did. <laughs> <laughs> I like your confidence in me. <laughs> Uh, so black has played R17, and then it's white to play? Yep. Uh, I mean, R, R18 looks obvious. Yeah. There you go. You just play the obvious move. <laughs> um, Is it right? And that's, that's, that would be the best move. It's, obviously, it's the best move. Uh, White has to play here to realize the potential of this placement that I just played. So playing the play placement first, I have to continue all the way to take away Black's. Uh, to, to take away the base. Well, partially, yeah, part yeah, Black, Black's not going to die, but it's, uh, it no, does no. make a big difference to Black's base. It okay. also makes a difference to White's base. Right. Well, you know, you know, I will tell you that, that playing with Leela has taught me uh, the value of before I play with Leela, I would never play like an R18 move. It would just look too small. But uh, Leela loves moves like that. Well, it's threatening to make a base for white on the upper side, which would be very important. Also, the fact that white has a weak group on the right side um, is not a big deal because white's willing to sacrifice part of it. Mm. Um, so it would, for instance, if black did something like this, um, white could push through here. For instance, and and something like this would just be good for white. White would just squeeze and start attacking in the center. Um, and white would have lost just about nothing. It would be this would be a good variation for white. Mm -hmm. So um, white actually wants to keep that group on the right um, relatively light. And as long as white is putting pressure on the corner, black's best move is probably just to capture the one stone. Um, and white can add one more stone to the upper side. Now the upper side is fairly healthy. And so the moment black plays here, um, white will jump out into the center. Mm -hmm. And white will be able to make a base on the upper side. While the groups, now we have three, um, three groups that are not quite settled. So white's mm -hmm. group and black's group. And again, if black plays here at any point, uh, white can push through. And again, black will have to cover here so white can cut. And again, we see white throwing away those two stones. So it would be something like, maybe white will play the extension here. Something like this. And white is getting enough strength towards the center that it, doesn't, it just doesn't matter, those three stones. That's nice. Um, the point is, I didn't have a living shape there to start with. Um, it takes a lot of work to, to build this position I have on the right side uh, into a living shape. And it's just not worth it. So I should just leave those stones and the move I want to play for those stones is, let's see if I, yeah, this move. And this move here is the move I want to play towards the center, just running out. So in order to make that move, this move ideal, um, I, I have to start with the corner. So everything um, I have done up to this point, especially that move I'm so proud of, the placement here in the corner, um, in order to make it work, I, I have to continue this way. But um, the move I played was this, which was a lousy move. Um, probably the worst move in this game. Oh, um, it deserves to be a losing move. So hard and on so, yourself. You're so hard uh, on I'm yourself. I'm really disappointed about that. Well, you see, um, basically the idea that I want to save this stone here um, was not good. It was sort of counter counterproductive. Um, so it's not helping me very much. Even though I played, played this move, added this stone to my group on the right, it's still um, not quite alive. It's, it's, I'm still... I'm going to have to play bad moves to make it a living shape. Like, for instance, uh, black continues here. On the right side, if I do something like this, um, I guess I have a living shape. But th this, this is just a very painful way to make a life. Um, so it's almost a wasted move. So the process of living on the right side is, um, is not a pleasurable process. That's why I should be trying to be more um, light about those stumps. Mm. 
So I continue on the upper side. Oh, no, I didn't do that one. I continue on the upper side. And Black covers, this is a very important move. So the moment Black plays here, the computer value for Black goes up. Um, but again, I, as I told you before, I don't worry about it very much. Um, and humans tend to think in point values. So we, um, maybe I'd say I'm, um, I'm eight points behind uh, before coming, or I'm nine points behind before, before coming. That's something that I understand. I, I know that I have to catch up two or three points. Uh, but the computers give you a, a winning percentage score. And like, for instance, 60% uh, for black or 65% for black could mean a number of things if you translate that to points. It could mean uh, one and a half points or half a point if it was just 60. Um, if it's more than 60, maybe it's one and a half points to two and a half points. Um, right. Right. But in yeah. a different type of game, it could mean that white's going to die. A big white group is going to die and it's going to be a collapse. It, it can mean that too, um, especially if you get higher numbers. Um, it's not that 70 points, 70% 70 would mean always two, two and a half points or three and a half points, but sometimes it does. It depends on um, how, how violent the game is getting. I've been thinking a lot about this just because I said, you know, uh, over the last few months, I've been playing with Leela a lot and I've also been using it uh you know to analyze games you know with friends which i gotta tell you just just eliminating all the arguments that i used to have <laughs> with my friends of course none of us know what we're talking about and that's the problem but you know uh, when you have leela to tell you it's really really useful but one of the things you know to your point is you know these percentages jump around a lot, but you have to really take them with a big grain of salt. Uh, there's mm -hmm. so, there's there's way too much variability uh, mm -hmm. in in you know it, like you say you know it, it could give it a really high percentage, but it just it's it, it's yeah you know, because it can read out especially as the farther along you get in the game, right? And it has and, it, in professional games quite often you're going to have a very small territorial difference. The territory right. is usually pretty balanced. Uh, and that means that uh, one point loss, losing one point, will make a fairly large um, difference in, this, in the winning score. So, Unless you're still winning, like if, if it's if it's a difference of winning between uh, winning three and a half points to two and a half points, maybe your winning percentage actually goes up as the game continues. So I know we have to finish, uh, you know, a little sneak preview for folks. You know, we're we're working on uh, we're very close to having volume one of the uh, the AlphaGo book. Uh, ready to come out, but here's here's another one. I think we should. Uh, it, it'd probably be a very quick little uh, thing, but we we should do something for folks of how to use alpha, uh, you know, things like Leela, you know, because they're out there. People are using them, and I think they are very useful tools. But like, uh, so, I like think so, professional players are still trying to figure that out too. Yeah, so maybe we don't have answers for you. <laughs> maybe some ideas. So can we, yeah. We have ideas. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm still getting ideas. Like I, um, treating it like gospel is not working really. It's, yeah. Um, problems with that. Yeah. So you have to just take the moves that you like, um, and make your choices about the winning percentage because, yeah, you know, because you should know that um, even if you're a professional player, you're probably playing some moves in the game that lose something like 20 percent uh, uh, winning percentage. Right. In, in just one move, you can, and, and, um, people can do worse than that. And you don't trust that, do you? Um, sometimes it's true. The point is that if you're going to make mistakes like that later in the game, um, you might as well choose an opening that you like right. rather than the highest uh, point percentage. Gotcha. So I, um, since my group on the right here, to get back to the game, since my group on the right is not comfortably alive yet, um, I do not want to be very heavy with my upper side. For instance, like this would be locally a feasible move. But if I start doing stuff like, uh, oh, sorry, the black, black didn't mean to play that move. That was a control. <laughs> um, if I start doing stuff like this to reinforce myself on the upper side, it means I'm going to get into trouble on the right side. So that's an example of what I don't want to do. So I, I sort of play lightly, and I'm trying to um, move the focus of this fight towards the upper left corner. Uh, where, where I can put some pressure on the black group. So black invades here, and I slide in here. Um, and black is, uh, black can make a life, but black would, for instance, if black plays moves like this, then that's going to help me on the side. 
So, um, or I might actually start from this side. Um, this kind of thing, I would still have the Kosumi in the corner or the diagonal move here to put more pressure on black. Um, it looks like in, in this variation, it looks playable for me. So that's the idea behind my uh, move sliding into the corner. And black, uh, black did not play that way. Black uh, countered by capturing white stones on the upper side. So we're seeing blacks getting even more territory um, in the upper right. And I played this move. So this is a sacrifice play to get uh, this move here. Um, the whole object here for white was to get this, for, this move as a forcing move against the right side. So I'm sacrificing those stones in the upper right. And if black captures here, um, there is some question as to how I'm going to continue here. Maybe I'm going to play something like this uh, and something like this to put some pressure on black in the upper, upper left corner. Um, or I might be um, I might be playing this forcing move also. This is also a forcing move that I could play first. Um, in the game, black protected the corner. And so I took the one stone. Um, but that was not my only option here. It might have been more interesting. Um, now, this is an example of a position which the computer program likes. Lilo liked this move. And it's going to be really complicated in execution. So black will capture here, uh, white plays here. Naturally, black will want to play an Atari from above. White captures, uh, and black has to find a co-threat. So black has two choices um, in the lower, lower right corner. So black could play this one, or black could play this one. Which do you think black should play? Uh, let me see if I can see it. I'm still behind you. Still behind, yeah. Um, I've marked two points in the lower right corner where black can play a co threat. Yeah, I think I'm still like 30 seconds or 60 seconds behind you. Oh, wow. Yeah, so well, <clears throat> you'll just have to set tell us because I'm too far behind to see where. Okay. Um, well, it's actually, it just changes how the game proceeds. So let's have black play this attachment and white will counter with the cut here. It gets into a huge fight. Um, and the co in the upper right is still continuing here because if black connects there, it's, it's gonna be another co. Um, this would be this kind of co. This would not be very good for black because the corner, corner group is not 100% alive when white wins the co. And so we have a potential um, black would actually just continue. Black would probably continue with the co and upper right, maybe with something like this, just to make sure the corner was alive. And we would have the co continuing. Um, you can see that the uh, white's group in the lower right is falling apart. Um, a very difficult fight that would cover the whole board would happen here. Um, so I wasn't sure about that. I, didn't, I, I wasn't sure that I wanted to do that. Um, it would have been very interesting. In the game, I just captured the one stone to, to make a living shape on the upper side. Okay. And so, to can you so black captures uh, some territory in the upper side. Uh, that's black has about twenty points in all in the upper side, I'd say. And uh, black's group in the corner is not a hundred percent alive. Black's group in the upper left corner, that is. Uh, so black has something like 40 points, and white still doesn't have very much territory to speak of. Um, and in the upper right, upper left corner, uh, white has a hane on the first line. So white can play here, uh, black will clamp, and uh, however white plays it, it's going to be a ko. So it's, for instance, like this. Um, white will have a ko there. Um, obviously, this will um, threaten the life of black's group, but black does have had room to move out into the center here. Um, so it's not as if this group is going to be killed immediately. Um, it's more likely that white will be using a move here later in the game from outside to enclose black. And then what black will have to worry about that call and will probably answer with something like this. So, so this would just be one way that actually in the actual game, this is how it turned out. So in all for, um, 
for real life, for practice, the black group is going to be difficult to kill. Um, but as, if you looked at it as a Tsumego problem, it would be a ko. So black starts to attack. Um, I've just played an extension on the lower side, uh, and black has started to attack me on the right side with a capping move in the center. And so at this point, I think I'm probably, um, black has a small advantage, and I have to find some way to create potential for myself in the center of the board. And so I played a, a rather unusual variation here, but with detachment here, um, basically with the idea to cut black off instead of having a connected black group in the center. A safer way for me to play would be to bump against black here and extend here. So I could make a living shape that way, um, but then black would have a relatively solid connection in the center and black would not have to worry about this one stone. So black would then uh, switch to the lower side uh, and oh. fade the lower side. Uh, do me a favor. I'm sorry. Um, I'm in KGS. I need you to get me into your game now so I can see it because I think it's a well, private room. It's, it's not private room. Um, so it's AGJ. The room name. I think you just need to give me permission to see the game. Uh, you're not in the room right now. And it, it's not a private room, as if I, be I believe it's, no, it's not a private room. You should be able to just come in. Is it the, uh, is it the uh, English game room or the? The English game room. Right. Um, it's a room called AGJ. Well, maybe it's outside the English game room. Yeah, I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Okay. You found it? Yep. Hi, there you are. So can you, can you see the game? Now I can see the game. All right, cool. Okay. I'll just, I'll just switch back and forth. Good. So uh, what I was saying here was that um, I was giving an example of how white could uh, live the normal way for white to live on the right side. Um, but in this position, most of black stones are connected. And, um, and the mark stone Black can allow white to capture that lick. So black will just invade the lower side. Black does have an advantage in territory. I'd say almost 10 points before Komi. Mm. Um, so, so I played here. This, the idea behind this attachment is to cut the black group on the right off. So I'm trying to make some potential for myself um, in the center of the board. Mm -hmm. And so this continuation, I get to squeeze. And now I have to live on the right side. Whoa. So that's a lie. Yeah. Um, it is a night. It's, it's a slightly improved way to live. This is very good Aussie for me on the right side. Um, but it still is only about six points, six, seven points. And so still I'm, I have something like um, 15 points uh, in small territories in the upper side, some points attached to my thickness in the center. And the seven points I've made on the right side add up to something like 15 points. Black has more like 40 points. So black has a territorial <laughs> lead. And um, I need to catch up, uh, hopefully, in the center of the board or with some territory in the lower right. That's a lot of points to catch up at this point of the game. It's not as bad. Um, actually, the next move that black played uh, made it about even. And so black. Um, Black has to decide how to deal with white's three stones in the center. Mm -hmm. It looks like, uh, for the moment, right. it looks like black has potential to attack. Um, black has to decide how to how to do that. Okay. Um, and the way he played it, um, it the computers then give me a, about an even uh, chance. Interesting. Um, but he uh, he played what you might call the bad suji. 
And so what would you say would be the good Suji move in this position? I mean, I tell you, I mean, you know, the cut looks really juicy, but it just doesn't really work. I, I tell you what I'm looking at, it's probably completely wrong, but for, bl for black, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I like the Knights move off, what is that, uh, M9 to just sort of get some, some this height. One? Yeah, just to get some height and sort of threaten the cut. This looks like it's probably the second best move. It's, it's, a, it's a reasonable move. Uh, so it's pretty good. Uh, but now I'll show you the fun move would be if Black had an advantage in the ladder. Right. If the right, ladder right. favored Black, right. there would be this move here, sort okay. of hard to notice. Yeah. Sort of hard to know, but it's forcing. So white answers, and then black could play here. So this would be only if oh, black that is cool. Black. Uh, but obviously, in this position, the latter favors white because because of all those white stones there. Of course, of course. Um, so that doesn't quite work. That would be it. Would be really funny if that worked, but it doesn't. Work. <laughs> so um, cutting here actually was the game move. So what quite, black should have done doesn't quite work there, does it? Um, well, he had a different plan. He had a plan wow. of his own. Um, it works sort of similar to your knight's move, and it's sort of hard to say which is better, actually, in actual practice. But for instance, when you play the knight move, white's probably going to connect here, and black pretty much has to extend here. This would be a, uh, if black does not extend at this point, the honey at that point would be a forcing move for white, and white jumps out. And black is left with a fairly thin position here. In the, on the right side. And so um, let's just look at the game. Black cut here and then got a lot of forcing moves from this side and then played the extension. And I was sort of obliged to continue in the center. So um, what Black is saying here is that this is a thicker shape for Black on the right side of the board. Mm. Um, so there is some logic to that. So it's, it's probably not a great difference between your variation, actually. But the, the good Suji move is not to play an Atari, um, a double Atari there. Sure. It's to play an Atari from the outside. Ah, uh, you know, I was wondering about that move because it, it's it's quite, it's actually kind of a thick move, isn't it? It's a good Suji move. Like if, yeah. if you have good Suji, you should be thinking of this move. Yeah. Um, for instance, if white plays here, you can see white's just getting a terrible shape. Um, this is sort of similar to the game, only like Black has played that move on the outside instead of having it inside being mm -hmm. taken by Black. So mm -hmm. that's um, just compare it with this position. It's a, a very different position, isn't it? And it's quite similar if White, for instance, uh, plays the diagonal move. If White plays here, again, Black can force from this side. It's going to be a very clunky shape for White, and Black can, Black can get, still has a forcing Atari there. Um, actually, what Leela suggests is that White just gives up the three stones and oh, takes for really? another. And um, this is a slight advantage for Black. Um, it wouldn't be um, an overwhelming big difference, but it would be a win for Black in this position. The interesting one is what happens if White connects here. This is White's strongest move to connect in the center. In this position, Black gets to um, squeeze from this move. So white will push through. Uh, I'm going to show you the only way that white can escape from the net here. There's only one way for white to escape from the net. So white plays all of these moves to escape from the net. And black will just throw away the right side. Something like this. So we have this big wall. And now we can see that in the center, actually, black has more potential than white. Um, this white group on the left here, let's mark the white group this white group on the left here is actually um, in danger of being attacked if black plays. Uh, for instance, let's uh, add a couple of moves. If we have something like this, we can see that white's group there is, is starting to get uh, pushed around a little bit. Mm. And so black has more potential in the center of the board now. And of course, white's corner territory is, um, is very small. Black has a forcing move on the first line here. It means it's going to be very easy for black to jump into the white territory in the corner. And so this is this is probably good for black. So black should have just played that Atari on the outside, um, but he didn't. So this would have been good for black. In the game, black played this way. 
So we got, this was more or less a forced sequence. So we got to this position and I continued in the center. I'm starting to get some potential in the center of the board, but it's not, uh, it's not definite yet. For the time being, Black has to deal with his group on the right. So Black plays a, a capping move and I played here. Um, this was a point where I was not sure what, where I wanted to play this move. Like for instance, playing here was also an option. This would put more pressure on the black group. Does, uh, that, course, does, does that totally clean up the uh, corner though? There's still Aji there, in the corner. There's still something, there's, black can live in the corner. Right, right. Or at least get a call. Maybe a call. Um, yeah, so uh, it, it, while I have potential to attack black in the center of the board, maybe I shouldn't be worrying about that. So this is something that I had a, a lot of trouble deciding. Um, it didn't make a big difference to Leela. I think Leela actually liked this move, but this move was seemed to be okay also. I, I yeah, I mean that 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 cleans the corner, which is points. And at this point, the game is very close. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't know what I want to do. Like for instance, <laughs> the, the normal shape move would be to play here, and this is the computer suggested move. Mm -hmm. And then I could continue in the center, for instance, maybe something like this. Um, the drawback, of course, is that it becomes a superfluous move uh, when I when black plays here, and I have to add another stone to the corner. Oh, that's it. annoying. So that's sort of annoying. Um, that's what I didn't like about it. And, yeah. and like, if I get then if I don't like that, then maybe I play here. I have a problem with it. It's it's the same thing if we get to this shape, and I end up putting another stone in anyway. If I go from underneath, maybe I can capture it. But now I'm going to have to worry about forcing moves from outside like this because. Oh, this so there's a lot of uh, frustration there. Um, but maybe I should have played that anyway. This is the move that Leela thinks I can win with this move. It's probably going to be very, very close. Um, so maybe I can't win with it anyway. It depends on how I play the rest of the game. So I played here. You can see I'm still trying to put some pressure on the black group in the center. Uh, black gets to play this. I uh, answer with the bamboo. And black has to um, protect the cut there because um, I was breaking the ladder. Um, and this is another interesting point in computer analysis, um, especially when I'm just using one GPU. And so the um, I think it would be different. Like if I was using, with AlphaGo, they had the Google supercomputer. They had um, what amounted to, um, I don't know, how many GPUs? They were using TPUs, weren't they? But they, they had some. <laughs> It, ridiculous it's, number. It's, it's a number that we don't need to worry about. Yeah. You know? uh, then, uh, you know, it would know, but um, I don't completely trust Leela when Leela says that I should have protected this side. Um, because my, my move was the extension in the center. I have issues with the center because when I play here, uh, black is going to cut here. I have another cut there to worry about. Mm. Uh, Black's going to play the double. Uh, this is threatening again to cut at the uh, Tengen point. And now Black's going to start a big fight here. Um, I'm not very, my group in the center there is not 100% alive. Um, I'm very uneasy about this fight. And I, I don't, even after going through some variations with Leela, um, I wasn't sure that I would want to play this one. It's, yeah. It depends yeah. on my being able to attack Black's group on the right. And um, I'm going to have trouble with my group on the left. So I, I have two weak groups here, which will figure into this fight. Um, and it's going to get very, very exciting. Uh, but my feeling is that <laughs> like, I, I didn't want to do this. They like exciting. But the other thing that, that you know, I've noticed is, is that it's not taking, you got to read all this stuff out, and that takes you time. Right. And, and I don't think the computer program, uh, we might say it, it hasn't read it out either. Um, Wow, to the okay. extent that I would be satisfied. Like some, this is the kind of, uh, this kind of complicated position um, is the kind of position where sometimes the computer programs can still go wrong hmm. and um, they can miss something okay. when it's really complicated. And it has to do with the hardware, hard hardware I'm sure. Like if right. we had better hardware, it would, it would be different. And also this variation is going to be very close. So I, I was thinking maybe I had chances to win with this variation. And I think I was, was was correct in that assessment. But you know, at this point, it's probably going to be half a point difference Jeez. if we play perfectly. 
And so there's no way that I have read this out. I'm, we're both running out of time at this point, especially me. <laughs> um, so black plays here. And again, this is where the computer says, Lila told me, and it was really hard for me to understand. Lila told me that I could play here. Black captures this and, um, and gave a good percentage for white. And I've worked with this. I tried to understand. I think mm -hmm. Lila means to say that white's going to win by half a point. Or um, that, that's what I, that, what I gather. It looks like white maybe is going to win by half a point. Um, I have no confidence that I could, can play that to the end. Um, so, so, so the trick that I've been doing lately when I, when I play Leela is, is, is as soon as I get a losing percentage, I go back to the move where, mm -hmm. I, where my percentage dropped mm -hmm. and, and play on from there. So, so I've, I've been kind of following you know, gingerly mm -hmm. in, in your foot. It's a lot. I got to tell you, I really recommend it to folks. I mean, mm -hmm. it's hard to understand, but I think I, I'm really, I've gotten bit by the same bug as you. You know, it's the trying to understand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's, exactly. worthwhile, that's yeah. worthwhile, right? I mean, yes. yeah, that, that, what makes it worth it? Yeah. Yeah. But you just sort of have to give up because sometimes you just can't understand it, right? I mean, it's just mm -hmm. like, well, sometimes one. the computer seems unsure. Like it didn't like my move. But shortly after that, it's going to give me a winning percentage again. <laughs> and really, yeah. Um, so I, I save the stones. And uh, black covers, I play one peep. So this is where I went wrong again. So this is uh, a point in the end game where I actually have a chance to win. Um, but after this, um, it's going to be much more difficult for me for most of the end game. So the move I should have played was I should have played from the corner here. Uh, a very natural exchange because sure. by inducing black to play here, it makes it very natural for me to capture this one stone, which is a move that is worthwhile anyway. Um, yeah. It takes yeah. away a lot of dodge. And um, and I would have no trouble with my group here because I have this forcing move on the side. So I'll have no trouble with my group. And I am putting a little pressure on the black group. And the good thing about this variation is that white's territory here in the corner has very good dodge. The corner mm -hmm. territory, mm -hmm. and so there's no uh, no tricks that Black's going to be playing there in the corner. Uh, the problem with my variation, where I extended, uh, problem number one is that Black can just jump out. Um, uh, let's let's get to that. Let's jump out in the center. So when it's compared to White's capturing at this point, White has not accomplished the um, effect of surrounding Black completely there. So it's a wishy-washy move on that side. Right. And also, I'm going to have trouble underneath. I have a weak underside. And also, in the corner, you can see my shape is a bit uh, smaller than before. Mm -hmm. And so later in the game, I'll just show you a preview of it. Later in the game, when Black does stuff like this, um, I'm going to have to worry about uh, co-variations co with this kind of stuff. And it's going, to be, it's going to be a headache there in the corner, too. Mm -hmm. In the actual game, I actually had to answer that move by um, playing here on the first line. And still there's potential for Black to force me to put one more stone in. Um, so there's a lot of trouble in the corner caused by the fact that I did not play this Hana here. So in the game, this is the game variation. After this, um, most of the time, Black, this is a winning variation. Uh, he didn't do that yet. This is a winning variation for Black. Black chose to play this move. I think he could have chosen to play moves like this would probably have worked Whoa. too. Into. Oh my well, God. black has two directions. I know, I know. Darn. And also the the fact that just having a stone there it creates a cutting point here. Yeah, it does. And also yeah. black has the surrounding move here. It's going to be, be putting a lot of pressure on white. Um, he he realized that he was winning, so he played the safe move. Um, and I have to dodge away because if I cover here, it looks very natural to cover. Mm -hmm. But black can cut here, and this is going to be very very bad for. Him. Because um, if I do anything like this, then Black can escape with the one stone here. So my group in the center, my stones in the center get captured. So if I play a different kind of Atari, he's going to extend. And now again, I have a dilemma. If I uh, run after it immediately, he gets to play the one Atari here. And he's going to win the semi. Um, so this, this is easy for Black. Mm. Um, so if I capture the one stone, he gets to play here. And now... 
uh, this is trouble for me because I'm not really connected. So this one is going to be a co. This one is going to be a co. Um, it was actually, uh, that's not a very good result for white because white has a group on the right side, which can be co-threats. And black has some co-threats in the center too. So this is a bit dangerous for me. Mm. And of course, the, when black starts taking the co, the local co-threats um, are not valid anymore because the co affects that. So white doesn't have, um, a, the co is so big that um, local co-threats like that or co-threats to escape would probably not be forcing. Black would just uh, take the territory on the side. So this is a difficult co for white. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, so I, I have to jump away. And black gets a very nice life here on the lower side. Black needed that extra eye to be comfortable in the center. And I, I connect up. Um, uh, this was a point where it would have been a bit closer if I had played here. Uh, just a game. local technical question. The, uh, the peep at uh, 08, is that just uh, Aji Keshi, no point in playing that? Um, it's, a big, it's a fairly big move. It's Sente three points. Um, I have ideas that I'm going to play a co on the upper side. Excuse me. Oh, bless you. Thank you. There's a, a, a play on the upper side. Let's just show you now. There's a play here which can sometimes involve, involve a co. And this is actually going to be the decisive co that uh, puts me back in the game, that gives me a win. I'm trying to see how you get a win out of this because it just felt like you, you lost a bunch of points there. This is a very... Um, it, this co is... Actually, the game is pretty close. It's eight. I, I think it's um, supposed to be eight points on the board. Um, but uh, this co um, can change that. It, it's a, um, a troublesome co. So I'm uh, one of the reasons I'm not playing that peep there is I'm keeping it for a co threat. I see. Okay. Connected. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Um, and actually, when in this variation, there's going to be a co on the left side too for a bit. So, uh, so I surround black. This is threatening to kill the black group um, with a co in the corner. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, if black plays away, I can play here. So this is going to be a co. Uh, so black cannot leave the corner. This would be bad for black. Right. Right, Another right. case where the co comes in. So he plays this. This was maybe better not play, but um, black played this exchange and lived in the corner and added that zone. Yeah, that, that's a big move at this point. And so I played here to surround this. This was slightly slack. Um, I might have done slightly better if I had played from the Guzumi. Um, a fraction of a point difference. It's, it's not enough to change the eight point loss. So black plays here. And I actually do play this peep. Ah, um, it it's it's okay. getting to be fairly big. So I decided sure. I have to play it sure. um, as a cold threat, even though I'm going to lose this call. Uh, so I backed up from the call. And um, so let's just um, go through the end game here for a little bit until it gets exciting. Um, so this was a point where Black could have just simply played the Atari here. This would have been one point better than the game. So this is where I'm going to catch up by one point, um, not all the way. Uh, but uh, Black played this exchange. He could have played once more here. And then I would have been in this position forced to connect here. In this position, I'm going to eventually have to put a stone in the corner because right. there's a potential Seki there. All right. So um, this would be OK for Black also. Uh, but the way he did it, he played away. That means I got to play this move. Oh, very nice. Uh, so this gains a point for me in the corner. Now there's no, going to be no move that I, I don't have to add a stone to it. So I gained a point here. I'm still losing by a small margin. Actually, in this position, um, it was very difficult for me to find a clear win for black. So maybe it's, um, I'm going to call it undecided. Um, I tried to figure out the end game. It was just a big headache with a lot of half point differences. Um, so I didn't really get a, a definite answer to that. Um, so it's a, it's a half point difference now. And this is where I start uh, what seems to be the winning variation here. When I play the honey here in the center of the board, I'm threatening to cut black off. So like if black plays away, I can cut here and capture the two stones. Obviously, that would be big at this point in the game. Sure. 
So black plays once here. And uh, my plan here is that I see that black has Damizimur. So we get to this co here in the upper side. Locally, this is not, not anything. It's not a co at all. I cut here, black takes the co. And I, um, actually, this move here I play as a co threat. This was a pretty big end game move for black to play too. Um, so I was saving that for co threat and sort of lucky that I managed to get it in in time because at this point in the game, it would have been a big move for black to play that as a reverse yose, mm -hmm. a gyaku yose. Mm -hmm. Um, and black extends. So locally, there's no problem here because if I continue here, it's not even a call. And black just captures from behind. Ah. So that's not the whole point. Uh, the whole point is, okay, you want to guess white's move? White's move. White's uh, next move. After, after so I, I've, I've showed you that this one doesn't yeah, yeah, work. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I have a plan here. You have a plan. Well, it involves the Dami Zumari at the top, which I've been looking at for a while, but I just don't quite see it. Is it is it pushing is it pushing it up? Uh not yet. Not yet. Uh maybe the sneaky M15 move? I don't know. I mean there's 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 just some there's some funky stuff going on there. Yeah, I'm showing it. Oh, game. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that makes everything work nicely, doesn't it? So if black cuts from the right side, uh -huh. he's going to run out of liberties, and I'm going to push through here. Oh, that's so sneaky. That would be bad. That would be bad. So black plays from this side, okay. and I push through. Now I push through here. Now, yeah, there, there, there. OK, there. black could live oh. here. Uh, this would be just losing too much territory for black. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. So black covers. Okay. I play here. Right. Black takes the co. I still have a co threat here. Black connects. And now at this point, black doesn't have any valid co threats. So even though I'm sort of running out of co threats, it doesn't matter because this is bigger than anything else on the board. So I play here. Yeah. And I use a local co threat here. Right, right, right. That's uh and if black five, answers five, this, five, it's gonna five, out. Point, five points, right? Yeah, it's, it's something like yeah, something like that. Um, um now, th yeah. this would just be the end of the game because Black would be in a park <laughs> and would not have any progress. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Um, and I still have, in a pinch, in a pinch, I still have a uh, quote like this kind of thing. I still have a quote There's threat. no pinch. There's no pinch. It's a, it's a, this is, this is. I, I still have this one, which would probably be good enough. Yeah, because I've not really lost anything in this exchange. Did you feel bad for him at this point? Um, no. A little bit? A little bit. <laughs> well, actually, he hasn't lost that much. It, it's not as bad as it looks like. It looks because terrible. locally, I've gained this uh, something like five points. That's five but points. I've given him uh, a few points back. Uh, for instance, this zone here was Mochikomi. It gave him uh, some extra points in the corner. Okay. And he got to, to um, reduce my territory here, so that's... That's a few points. Oh. It turns out that at this point in the game, um, what I can say for definite is that I'm winning by one half point. One half points. OK, so you picked up two, and, two maybe two, maybe three points? Uh, well, that's what I thought at the time. But uh, when I studied the position before that, I had trouble uh, winning by a large margin for black. So like it was a half point one way or the other before this, mm. as far as I can tell. So mm. maybe I just gained one point. Wow. Um, so to go, actually, Black is losing by half a point at this point, uh, but he messed up a little bit in the end game. Uh, we're in a variation here. So this is the point where um, you're going to post the SDF file too. Sure. And so it's going to be the one that I have just created here. But yeah. um, previously, this is the one variation that um, I made before this uh, broadcast, actually. Um, I tried to find a way for Black to win by half a point. So I tried to find the best end game for Black, okay. and it, uh, it didn't quite work. And so there's a variation and a sub variation for that that I've already left into it, just to show you. Uh, it goes like this, and Black's going to try to gain a little bit extra. Um, by playing, by daring White to play a co there on the left side. Mm. So the co-variation, black just plays away, 
Black is getting some extra territory on the left side uh, with, with this move here. And then at this point, Black plays away, sort of daring White to play this Tesuji, which makes a call off the left side. Um, but I don't have enough co-threats to make it work. Unfortunately for White, this is not going to work, and Black is gaining too much territory. So I go back to this. This is the correct end game for White. And it looks like White's winning by half a point. So those are the variations that I have added here. Mm -hmm. So people who are interested, they go on for a lot of moves. Like, So the variation there is about 80 move variation. And I've decided that Black's going to win by, I, I mean, White's going to win by half a point anyway. Mm -hmm. But uh, Black made a move here that was, the exchange for White's stone here was a fraction of a point lost for Black. Mm -hmm. And then it was also bad because it increased my co-threats. And then he made a mistake here. Um, let's see if I can get to it. Um, after this call, he, he just probably realized that he was losing anyway, so he didn't care. Uh, but this exchange here was bad. And that's sort of, I, it's probably, um, it's sort of hard to explain me. Let's see if I can show why. Uh, in this position, locally, uh, there's a good uh, possibility that we get to something like this. And then uh, later on, when Black plays away, uh, white will have potential to start a call here. But you can see that white is in Dhamma's mark. So like um, later on, uh, white will have to add a stone here. Yeah. Or a stone. Or, and even if white adds a stone here, uh, then black can still force white to add a stone, another stone. So it, it's a bad position for white. Yeah. And therefore, it's better for black not to have that exchange there, uh, which fixes white's shape. And it makes a fraction of a point difference on the left side. And those two mistakes that Black made in the final stage of the end game increased my lead to one and a half points. So the, the, in the end of the game, it's going to end with White winning by one and a half points. Mm, mm, mm. So this was the first game of the A section of the Meijing tournament. So that's the final. Uh, it's one of the final sections of the uh, preliminaries. Mm -hmm. So like after this is the first game of the A. After this, I have one more game in A. Uh, which is going to be against Takao Shinji, who was mm -hmm. the Meiji just a few years ago. I think he was Meiji was about three years ago. Wow! Uh, wow! But he dropped into the final section. He, he dropped into the league by losing the Meiji first, and that's a round robin league. Uh, he dropped out of the league, um, so then he was in the final section. He lost his first game in the final section, so now he's in A. So this is um, his debut in the A section. Um, which is about, let's see, it's about five game, five rounds away from getting it back into the league. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, so so my next game after this game is going to be against Takao. And this game was played. I think you told us, but I've forgotten. It was, it was uh, played at the end of July, July twenty fifth. Right. Like, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Wow. So this must have been a pretty cheery uh, win for you. Yeah, well, it was coming after um, a kind of a dry spell. So I, I was um, happy to win against ECF for the first time. Um, and it was a fairly well played. It, I didn't fall apart in this game. So I, I was happy with the way I played too. Yeah, no, and it's it's a it's, uh, it's fair amount of, of you know, pretty significant late game reading, which is, you know, mm -hmm. you, you kind of prefer, you know, to be to be using that for the end game. But I mean, there was some pretty severe uh, fights. I mean, that whole situation at the bottom there, you know, uh, when when uh, it got pretty dicey there, I, I, I felt like the game was slipping away from you there. So good, good, you know, that- You're talking yeah, about the fight here. Yeah. I, I, I actually really agree with, with Lee. I mean, having played Leela a bunch in the last few months, I would, I would immediately play a move from below just, just because every time I try and save stuff, I pay for it again and again and again. It's yeah, so, that does happen. It's so painful. And so, you know, even though the, the like the 04 looks mm -hmm. ter terribly slow, it just finishes everything really nicely. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I really liked your sequence. But then when, when, when Black sort of drives down, uh, and, and separates you, and, and your group almost dies. My God, my heart was in my mouth. Yeah, very, very tricky. But 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 exciting for viewers. So there's that. 
Yes. Yeah, it was a very interesting game, I think. It was um, a lot of my games I played after this also were exciting, um, oh, just good. in the context. So, so I'll, I'll be looking forward to a chance to show them to people. Excellent, excellent. Well, wonderful game. It's great to, uh, I know you've had a really busy uh, few months, and, and, uh, and so we, and we continue working on the AlphaGo book. Uh, and uh, uh, thanks to everybody for bearing with us on our, uh, on our debut here. Uh, with a uh, little, little lagginess, but I promise uh, we will resolve that um, and we will be doing uh, more with that. Some really good suggestions from the, uh, the viewers here in the chat as well. Uh, I think we will be switching over to OGS, which has a bunch of, of nice uh, things there. We just have to do a little tweaking on that. So, uh, and just a reminder, uh, that a lot of folks have been asking about contributing and we just couldn't deal with that. Uh, but definitely since we need to acquire some new equipment, um, you can hop on over. Uh, thank you, uh, Stephen. Uh, isn't he wonderful? <laughs> you can just click right there and contribute. There's probably a place uh, where you can note that you'd like it to go to support these uh, streams. But I think we will be doing um, more of these streams. It's a way to, uh, for you guys to be engaged um, and, uh, you know, it just put some more pressure on us because we love the pressure, right, Michael? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Michael, thank you so much, as always. Uh, a really exciting games. I think we'll, we're probably going to be, look, uh, we have two AlphaGo games all done and ready to post. I think we may drop those uh, over the, uh, the, the next couple of weeks for a little holiday, uh, Thanksgiving holiday uh, treat for you guys, and then uh, we'll be, I think, doing some that we'll probably start out with broadcasting uh, on Twitch and then post those to the uh, to the YouTube channel later. Um, and, I, and then, as Michael was saying, he has uh, a bunch of his own games, mm -hmm. which I which I like, Michael, because I have some chance that I actually might understand them. So right, yeah. 